What goes first, ice and water or drip edge? What goes first, ice and water barrier or drip edge? What goes first, ice and water or drip edge? At least there's ice and water there to protect the plywood and potentially what goes behind that drip edge. If you're doing it the other way, it's probably because you just were too, too lazy or whatever to get it uh, the sequence right. In this video, we're gonna go over the most controversial topic in the roofing industry on the technical end. What goes first, drip edge or ice and water? As simple as it sounds, the answer is very complicated. Even manufacturers don't have consensus what goes first. Here's our latest poll, we did it about a year ago. 58% says drip edge, 42% says ice and water should be on top. The question is, what is right for you? If you're the homeowner and looking to hire a roofing contractor, this is the question and conversation you should be asking them during the interview because every roofing company has to answer this question. I'm gonna to present to you four different roofers from different parts of the country. One is from Wisconsin, another one from Illinois, one is from California, and the last one will be from Philadelphia. You'll hear them talk and explain this issue, why they have decided to do what they do. Those are most reputable roofers in their regions. If if you're the roofer watching this video, please comment below what is it that you do in your company, your official statement and explanation of why you do it that way. Let's go. Let's start with what is ice and water and what is drip edge. Ice and water is a barrier that protects usually around perimeter or first couple layers of your roof. It's a peel and stick kind of product. Um, it sticks to your deck and it protects you from ice dams, from uh, heavy rains from any waters that potentially can back up. Most people don't understand, don't realize that asphalt shingles, which is 80% of the market is asphalt shingles, is water shedding products. It's not waterproofing products. You cannot submerge it in water and you have to think about how it's sealed and what will happen if the wind will blow under. For example, if you spray your roof from underneath, the water will find a way under the shingles again because it's not waterproof it's proving material, it's uh, water shedding material. Now you need some underlayments underneath and drip edge also protects that very edge all around. It helps the water uh, drip away from the house. It's one of the most important component in the roofing system, helps the water to drain away from the house, drip away instead of kind of uh, roll around and make everything wet underneath uh, soffit and fascia. So drip edge is extremely important and ice and water is extremely important. Up no north, you cannot install your roof without it. Somewhere in Alabama where there's no code, somewhere in Canada where there is no codes enforcement, you will see roofers uh, installing shingles on top of the plywood. I think it's 100% wrong. And if your roofer is doing that, or you're trying to save some money, please, please don't do it. Your roof will leak sooner or later. Your plywood will get destroyed, delaminated, and the water will get under the shingles. That's why we install both the drip edge and ice and water barrier. But let's answer the questions. What goes first? First, I wanna to present to you one of the roofers in the Wisconsin area and his explanation. What goes first, ice and water or? Drip edge. Drip edge. Drip edge. Drip edge goes first? For on me. The, on the front? Yes. But on the, on, the, on the sides, on top. How do you explain it? Is it a code or is it a practice? It's, it's a preference. When we put the ice and water shield first and then we put our gutter apron on top, now a lot, a lot of times the guys will come through, tack it with a hammer tacker, and then they're gonna nail it when they're putting their starter on. Now let's say we go and do redo the gutters afterwards and the gutter guy goes up and puts his screws into the gutter apron, flattens it out, and then that sort of bulges up sometimes the uh, gutter apron and that can cause water behind the fascia or behind the gutter. It's been really important for me to get the guys to physically hand nail the gutter apron on first. So when, you, when you're gunning the starter on, you don't know what exactly you're hitting. You could hit that little void that we see sometimes between the fascia and the plywood. 
and, th and then we can have some problems. This is a great example how business owner responds to a question. What I appreciate about Nate, whether I agree with him or don't, he knows what he's doing, he has the reason behind it, he's not violating codes, he can explain it to the homeowners. I cannot tell you how many times I ask this question to a roofer or a business owner who runs a roofing business and he has no idea. If business owner has no idea, it means he cannot explain it to his crews, maybe he doesn't know what his crew is gonna do, maybe he has a couple crews and there's no consistency one crew does it this way another crew does it that way let me show you one of the comments uh, from one of our guys in the community in philadelphia area this is the root of the problem steve snyder says from dreamworks roofing gf says to put it under the drip and oc says to put it on top owing scorning and gf is one of the biggest manufacturers according to certainty for example drip edge must be applied so that the higher pieces will overlap the lower pieces at the rake drip edge may be installed uh, under or over winter guard when drip edge is installed over winter guard the winter guard must cover the top of rake board now we have alan from equity roofing explaining how they do it and why they do it in pennsylvania what goes first ice and water barrier or drip edge i see right here you have uh, drip edge first, ice and water on top of it. This is the way uh, code is in our area to do a drip edge first, ice, ice and water, water next. On, on the on the e, I mean on the rake edges, it's underlayment first, drip edge second. Um, I think if you have significant like a lot of ice damming areas where there's snow on the roof all winter, that's when you know you have that option of or the, sometimes the water ends up going under the drip edge and up behind. So I had one situation where. We did a repair in the winter. We had more snow last year than we had in years. And where that's what was happening. In the eve, eve edge, there was no overhang. It was ending up in the house. So what we did is we took it off. We ran the ice guard down or across the fascia. So it was continuous. Put the fascia back on, put our drip edge on. If, you, if you're doing it the other way, it's probably because, I don't know, you just were too, too lazy or whatever to get it the, the sequence right. What I like about Alan's explanation, he brought ice dams problems. In Philadelphia, they don't have a lot of uh, ice dams, but they still have a code that requires it to do a certain way. And even he was questioning some of his methods. He follows the code, but then he also sees that in reality with the ice dams, sometimes they have different issue and i'm going to bring to you mo two more cases one of them is brett mills from mills roofing from lake tahoe area they have tons of ice dams they've been in business for over 40 years they built one of the best roofs in the country listen to the way how they do it what goes first drip edge or ice and water ice and water ice and water goes first yes love it why because that nail needs to penetrate and get sealed Okay. And if anything gets behind the drip edge, at least there's ice and water there to protect the plywood and potentially what goes behind that drip edge. But we take the extra step also and do another strip of ice and water right there. And our titanium will then come down over the drip edge also. So that if the water does get past the shingles or whatever, it's still going out and over the drip edge. One of the best explanations ever. Now, here's the thing about this explanation. They also have codes, they also have manufacturer instructions, but they're going with their experience. And one thing you need to understand that you are as a roofer is putting your name on the roof. Yes, you can file a claim with the manufacturers, but it's gonna be a really long debate who is liable for that roof because you in your experience essentially is a case study code might change based on your experience so for example if you see that something is not working but you're required to do it and you do it for 10 years and 10 years later they change the code because of guys like you who spoke up and stood up to the code and say this is wrong you know in our experience we see roofs every day it's been leaking after we're doing we're doing it your way they can change the code but what's going to happen to all the roofs that you have installed according to the instructions i know it's controversial to even give advice uh, to do something against your gut against the rules against the manufacturer instructions but what mills roofing is doing they are doing it the way they think it will work. They 
not asking manufacturers, they're not asking um, asphalt shingle uh, manufacturers or associations to tell them how to do their jobs. They've been in business in 40 years, they know what works and get, they can present their case. Last case for today is Joe Hamstra from uh, Illinois. Very similar explanation. He decides to follow the code, but listen to what he has to say. What goes first, ice and water or drip edge? My personal opinion is that the ice and water should go on first, should hang down over the fascia, drip edge should go on top of that. So when ice forms in the gutter and starts the, the vat back up, it's still on top of the ice and water. But our codes don't allow for that. And our where code, is that? What city? Uh, Will County, Illinois. Okay. Mandates that the ice and water shield goes on top of the drip edge, and so that's what we do. I did call the manufacturer of a couple different ice and water shields. They agreed that it should be on top of the drip edge, so it's a hill I'm not going to die on. But, but you think it should be under? I think it should be under. Here's the problem in this case. Joe here wants to do what's right. He calls um, ice and water manufacturers, he's talking to them, they agree with him. But the problem with the code is you have to pass the inspection. If local code is saying you have to do it this way, you literally will not be able to close the job with the city that you're working in because they require them. I don't know why is that. I don't know who is another side. I don't know, you know, what code they adopted. They might adopt it international building code practice and they're doing jobs like you would do them you know somewhere down south but the reality is this roofer struggles struggle is real he wants to do a different way he follows local code requirement it's not even manufacturer recommendation in this case and there's one more way how you can do it and i want to present to you as well because many many roofers in comments uh, have suggested it and many roofing companies that we visited also are doing it this way and the last method that's available to us and a lot of roofing companies are doing it it requires a little bit more time a little bit more money but many many are doing it and implementing this way it's simply to sandwich drip edge or gutter apron with both pieces of uh, ice and water for example um, we have comment here from Gilland Mr. Gilland it sounds like you're asking how should it actually be. Based off fortified programs, the roof deck and fascia sealed with a tape, uh, ice and water shield installed drip edge over the tape uh, IWS, then seal over the top with three foot, um, feet um, IWS. I understand majority of us install per manufacturer specs or whatever we have been thought down the line. We install over the drip edge, but I think to answer your question currently is under the drip edge and over the drip. Another similar explanation here, actually quite a few are doing it that way. Over the drip edge and felt under drip edge. The former is to prevent ice damming in cool, uh, cold climates. The later, the latter is to prevent wind driven rain from high wind storms. As a matter of fact, few manufacturers of ice and water barriers will also tell you the same thing. But of course, they have a little bias in it because if you do it this way, you will use more product. I kind of like it. And uh, another thing I've seen and we see Ico is coming up with their new product where they have new starter, it looks like a tape and you simply taping it on top. So you are sandwiching that ice and water barrier. Now, some roofers don't agree with that method either. You have to go with your gut. You have to go with your manufacturer and your local code. So it's kind of three plays here. One is your climate. Second is local building code. And third is the product that you're installing, manufacturer specifications. Based on those three factors, you as a business owner have to make the decision what works in your area. Please comment below and I wanna hear from you your official statement. We're probably gonna do an update of this video in a couple of years based on comments here. If you wanna be featured with your opinion and if you wanna get technical with us, explain to you, we're gonna pay a lot of attention to it because I think it's one of the most important issues in the roofing industry. It's very technical and we should come to the consensus what works the best and what the best practice is. But today it's 58.42. Uh, at other poll when we did it a little bit later, it's, it has changed to 75.25 based on 605 votes. So you can see how roofers are split, but I also see that one is winning over another. But 
again, there's different areas. We have Florida, we have California, we have Canada, and uh, it's impossible to level everyone and tell everyone the same thing. But I also think that manufacturers should also study this a little bit more and give us a little bit better instructions how to do their product so it doesn't leak. Because when we do it their way, they should be liable for those leaks, especially in the ice dam, uh, uh, serious ice dam climate. If this video brought any value to you, please subscribe to the channel if you're new here, everything helps. And if you're looking for a trusted contractor in your area, please check out our recommendation at directory.com. It's a platform that connects homeowners and contractors. We guarantee every single transaction, every single hire with a $20,000 guarantee. So if your roofer does not know this or does it wrong or simply does not understand what works in your city and he installs it improperly, we will come investigate and we'll reimburse you if it was roofer's fault in the first place. Check out directory.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.